My dear friends and family, I'm Operator Starsky and today we will talk about something that Russian terrorists hoped would stay one-sided forever. They're flying junk. Shahids, Gerberas, Landsats, cruise missiles and now whole showers of glide bombs that they throw at Ukrainian cities every single night. Terror Russia is working really hard to turn the peaceful Ukrainian sky into one big shooting range. Only in October this year they launched more than 5,000 strike drones of different types against Ukraine. So today we will talk about why this is such a hard problem, what exactly Ukraine has been doing to survive this air terror, and finally about a completely new system that has already arrived to Ukraine. It's called DWS-1 or Wall of Drones, made by French company a trade. It's basically an AI-controlled flying minefield that is supposed to eat Russian drones and glide bombs for breakfast. We'll talk about all that in our today's episode. Let's start with the numbers because they explain much of the problems Ukraine is facing nowadays. According to Ukrainian intelligence, the terrorist federation can already produce about 2,500 precision missiles per year. We're talking cruise, ballistic and even so-called hypersonic Russian missiles. And this pace was planned exactly for 2025. That's roughly two full-scale missile barrages every month without touching old stockpiles. At the same time, they've turned drones into a real conveyor. The Ukrainian main intelligence directorate says Russia can produce about 2,700 drones per month now and wants to reach 70,000 long-range drones already this year, including up to 30,000 Shahid type attack drones per month. Independent analysis of launches shows that in mid-2025 they were already throwing around 5,400 Shahid drones per month at Ukraine. That is roughly 170 drones a day on average. And that's just drones. The real horror, especially for the frontline cities like Kharkiv and the whole south, are the Russian glide bombs. This flying trash can glide around 70 kilometers and in new versions more than 100 kilometers from a safe zone deep behind Russian lines. Now, according to Ukrainian intelligence, Russia planned to make up to 120,000 glide bombs already this year and among them about 500 new long-range variants that can reach 200 kilometers and actually they're already working on versions that may fly up to 400 kilometers that means that russian jet can stay far inside its own air defense umbrella drop a package of bombs and land safely avoiding ukrainian air defense while the bombs keep gliding towards kharkiv odessa or make alive. Flight time for such a bomb from 100 km distance is about 7-8 minutes. It comes at 700-800 uh, km per hour from high altitude and very often guided by UAVs and electronic record measures that uh, give them quite accurate coordinates. Basically, if you are sitting in a building near the front line and Russian aviation once that building gun, it becomes a really big problem for you. On top of that, Shahids are also evolving. Russians started to launch them to higher altitudes and use the dive bomb profiles for, from more than two kilometers up. Uh, and they do that basically to get out of range of small arms and mobile air defense groups. Now let's talk about what Ukraine has been doing all this time to survive this terror. The first layer of protection is classic air defense. We're talking Patriots, SMPT, Iris T, NASAMs, old Soviet systems, German Gepards, Skynex, and so on. These systems are excellent against missiles and drones, but every intercept is very, very expensive. Also, missiles are limited. In the first year of the war, interception rates for missiles and Russian drones were often above 90%. But as Russia increased the number of missiles and drones and upgraded them, Ukrainian statistics unfortunately started to go down. Western media that looked at October data say that from more than 5,300 drones of all types launched that month, our defenders managed to destroy or suppress about 80%. And even though it may sound good, but with thousands of drones, the remaining 20% 
still equals hundreds of hits. To compensate, Ukraine built a huge network of mobile fire groups. These are crews with heavy machine guns, automatic cannons, man pads, electronic warfare rifles, pickups with thermal sights, all that stuff driving around at night hunting shahids. Military command says these mobile teams alone intercept around 40% of the targets in some regions, but uh, there is a slight downside. The Russian terrorists nowadays keep pushing shahids higher and faster exactly to get out of the effective range of their weapons. Then we have helicopters. Ukrainian Mi-8 and Mi-24 crews flying at night with side-mounted miniguns heavy machine guns literally chase shahids in the sky. By autumn 2025, Ukrainian general staff reported that helicopters had already shot down more than 3,200 shahids in roughly a year. And this number keeps growing. Just recently, another Mi-8 crew was recorded destroying a shahid with an M134 minigun in a beautiful burst. Ukraine also started to use light aircraft, ultralights and small twin-engine planes as drone hunters. On the ground, Ukrainian engineers created systems like the AI-powered Sky Sentinel turret, a relatively cheap automated gun mount uh, that uses radar and computer vision to shoot down shahids without wasting expensive missiles. It already has confirmed kills and costs a fraction of Western missile systems. And finally, we have the new star, the interceptor drones. Basically, FPV drones, but turned to hunt other drones. Ukraine is moving them into mass production. Official plans speak about 600-800 interceptor drones per day in the nearest future, and uh, some sources mention a goal of up to 1,000 drones per day. In one of the recent massive Russian attacks, Ukrainian interceptor drones destroyed about 150 shahids and decoy drones in a single night. All this works together – classic air defense, mobile groups, helicopters, light aircraft, interceptor drones and AI turrets. But as we can see, Russian terrorists still manage to push more and more drones and uh, gliding bombs through the system. Basically, at this point, the Russians are so obsessed with the idea of killing Ukrainians, so they're literally raising taxes and uh, prices, decreasing pensions, and uh, watch their schools and hospitals fall apart. Instead, they launch hundreds of drones in one wave, mix real drones with decoys, attack from different directions, different altitudes, and combine this with missiles. And because of all that, Ukraine really needs something that is cheaper per shot, can work in huge numbers and doesn't get blind when Russians jam GPS and communications. And this is where our new friend comes in. The system is called DWS-1, it's made by French company Atrade. Physically it looks like a normal shipping container on a truck or on the ground. And inside that container you have radar, you have a bunch of other sensors, computers, communications and racks full of small interceptor drones. When this system is on duty, it quietly observes the sky and when it detects a threat, it opens up and starts spitting out drones like a beehive. According to the company and recent articles, one unit in typical configuration carries about 200 interceptor drones. The architecture allows one operator to control up to 100 drones at the same time, because the rest of the work is done by AI, we're talking swarm intelligence. Developers also advertise that the system is scalable up to 1000 drones in a combined wall, if several containers are networked together. How does it actually work? Inside the container there is a multi-sensor brain consisting of radar, radio frequency scanners and cameras. They detect incoming targets like shyheads or other UAVs and also the Russian gliding bombs. And then they build their trajectory in real time. The system has a preloaded 3D map of protected areas, so it can work even when Russian electronic warfare starts jamming the GPS. And that is very, very important because nowadays shyheads and many Russian drones are escorted by 
quite strong jamming. When the AI decides that there is a real threat, it starts launching a swarm of interceptors. Each drone becomes a brick in a flying wall, forming something like a curtain in the air on the predicted path of the target. Guidance uses a mix of onboard computer vision and a trace ultrasonic navigation system, which helps the drone coordinate their uh, exact positions relative to each other and to the target. In tests, according to a trade and business insider, the system achieved 100% success rate against uh, test targets and uh, worked even in GPS denied environments. According to the developers, the cost of one intercept is counted in a few thousand dollars instead of millions for a missile. And basically, now this system flips the economics. Now it's Russian terrorists who spend more money on their shahids and glide bombs than Ukraine spends to shoot them down. Another interesting thing that the drones are battery powered, so if they take off and don't find any targets, they can return back to the container, recharge and be used again, and only the drone that actually rams the target is lost. From the operator's side, it's also quite simple. One person sets up the protected zone, the rules of engagement, and then supervises the swarm. Is it already in Ukraine, and uh, what can it change? So first of all, yes, my friends, our trade confirms that the first drone wall system has already been delivered to Ukraine and will be permanently based there. Ukrainian and international media say that it will be deployed in the coming weeks, most likely to protect cities and critical energy infrastructure from Shahed raids and later to fight glide bombs near the front. The exact place, of course, is not disclosed and that is good for obvious reasons. What we know is that system can later be integrated with Ukrainian-made interceptor drones. If it works in real combat the same way it worked on tests, there are several big advantages. First of all, it gives an extra layer against Shahids and other Russian drones without burning expensive missiles. Those can stay focused on crews and ballistic missiles instead. Also, it offers at least some realistic way to fight glide bombs, which until now were very hard to intercept because of speed and short reaction time. And also, it is modular. You can move the container by truck or train, park it near a power plant, or a big city, switch on and you have a permanent flying minefield above this place. And maybe one more interesting detail, my friends, European analysts already discuss their own drone wall along the borders with the Terrorist Federation to protect Baltic and Nordic countries. Of course, it's not some magic shield, no system is 100% reliable, and Russians will definitely try to adapt, change tactics, add decoys, try to overload it or destroy it with precise hit. But the fact is, uh, this is the first time we see something that really looks symmetrical and provides protection not only to Ukraine, but also to our friends in Europe. The Terrorist Federation is trying to turn the sky about Ukraine into a permanent storm. But step by step, together with our partners and allies, we are building systems that can break this storm apart. Dear friends, uh, thank you for watching. I'm Operator Starsky. As always, be safe and I'll see you in the commentaries. Subscribe to UATV English and stay updated on the most important events, top news from Ukraine and all over the world, in-depth analysis, exclusive reports and interviews, all on hand in our channel. Join our community of viewers and stay tuned.